Hello everyone, welcome back to Porky's Collectibles. Today we have another great video for you. Today we're gonna to be opening up one of these Astro Radiant booster boxes. I know I'm a little bit late to the scene, but we're gonna see what we can pull from the booster box. But before we start, please like and subscribe to our channel, follow us on the Instagram, and also check out our eBay page where we're always listing new cards. So I'll go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna choose the left one for today. I am left-handed, so in terms of cards I'm trying to pull from this one, the one I really want is definitely gonna be Winchamp, the alt art one that everyone seems to really want. The other one I really like as well is the Beedrill V alt arts. Those are my probably top two. If I were to rank all the alt arts, I would say it would go Machamp, then Beedrill, then it would be Dialga, the origin form, then the Palkia, actually no, Palkia, then Dialga, and then it would be the Sneasler, and finally it would be the Lilligant. In terms of other cards we would like to pull from this, trainer gallery wise, I would say Garchomp and Starmie V are the ones that are the ones I really want. Wow, did I really mess this up? Oh, this, this just didn't fold up. That's weird. The packs look, they have a white trim this time around, which is very interesting. In terms of pack art, let's see which pack art we have. The Origin Form, Palkia, Dialga, Decidui, Usui, and uh, Typhlosion is the uh, pack arts. I'm gonna mix these up a little bit so we don't get the secret rare or the best card in the first pack and then the rest of the opening is not as fun. That doesn't seem to be the case with me because I have horrible luck pulling good cards. If I can pull one of the cards I've mentioned from above, that would be a definite win. Um, I don't think I've ever actually pulled a chase card from an English set, at least not on video. So those are definitely be the ones that I'm looking for. This set doesn't really have any cards that are worth a whole lot of money, but that's fine with me. I think it's going to be an underrated set. I would still put this set in terms of popularity uh, or the cards or sets I actually like. It would be around the same as Chilling Rain. I do like the energies. The energy look a lot more interesting. I like the sparkles for it. So we got a Leaf Energy. We got a Kamaldo. We got a Knocked Owl. We got a Jubilee Village. There's a secret uh, rare for this one. That would be the second one I would want to pull. Uh, definitely Path to the Peak would be the one I really want. Ashawat. Scyther. Stantler, definitely a lot of good artwork for this set, I will say. Yanma, Hoot Hoot, definitely they're trying to put more scenery in the cards uh, compared to the older sets. Coolfish is the reverse, and then there is a Hisuian Typhlosion V. This is the regular V. Yes, it is a regular V card. There is the full art form, but it almost looks like a full art, but full arts typically We'll have texture. Oh, I, I can't say typically. They, have te they always have texture. That's how you know if it's a full art. Regular Vs don't have texture. It looks almost just glossy. So those are, are ways that you can differentiate between regular Vs and full arts. In terms of sets that are coming out, Pokemon Go sets. I'm pretty excited. There was a leak of the Radiant Blastoise, which I definitely think is really cool looking. I can't wait for the Venusaur because there has never been a shiny Venusaur in the TCG to my knowledge. So your first card is going to be the Electric Energy. We got Quilava, Heavy Ball, Hippodon, Ponyta, looks really nice, drinking water. Cricket, Cricketot, nice Psyduck. This is probably my favorite rare, I'm mean not rare, uh, common from the uh, set. We got Stantler, Gardenia's Vigor, and then there is the Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star. Wow, two packs in a row. I mean, this really pulled the regular V over there, so this is just appropriate for what we have so far. In terms of what has been going on for what I've been purchasing, I've been keeping up with the Pokemon Center. I always feel like there's going to be an ETB drop. Apparently, I missed it last week. Kind of bummed about that. Apparently it was also a Hidden Fates ETV drop that only lasted for like 30 seconds on the website. So, you know, that was interesting. So I got one of those V-Star markers. We got the Watt. We got a Gutsy Pickaxe. We got Wishcast, Barboach, Bergmite, Rufflet, Naraponita, Chatot. There is our first trainer gallery, which is a wide deer. That's not bad. I mean, there's worse cards. I think this one's actually pretty good. Pretty, pretty good card to look at. I wonder if these V-Star markers, it's not guaranteed, but will de denote a Trainer Gallery card. So that is our first Trainer Gallery card. I think there should be two to three Trainer Gallery cards within a booster box. In terms of what I mentioned before, there's usually six to eight Ultra Rares, not including the Trainer Gallery cards. So in all, you should probably get around 10 hits. It's gonna be upside down again, I just know it. Nope, wow. There it is, code card. One, two, three, four. Okay, Fire Energy is the first card. Then we got Dark Tricks, Drift Bloom, 
trekking shoe. There is a secret rare of that one. Not really, don't really care for that one. Krikatot, Sudowoodo, Combi. We got a Drift Flume. We got another Psyduck. And then we got a Bastodon. That's going to be a rare, reverse rare. And then we got a Hisuian Sneasler. So three for three, holographic hits. So that's where we're at right now, like I mentioned before. I'm wondering, uh, after looking at some of the pull rates for this set, notice that it seems like it's harder and harder to pull the cards you really want. Uh, want. I think like Dialga, no, the, yeah, the Origin Form Dialga is a one in like, oh, I can't get that right one in 800 something odd uh, chances to pull it the machamp v alt art is like one in two uh, 1200 so definitely a lot harder to pull okay leaf energy we got a curlia wait and see turbo that's interesting title a uh, sheldon we got a togepi first time pulling togepi another combi you got a chatot another psyduck another drift plume we got a switch cart and non-holographic Suian Arcanine. So I actually have not played the Dialga game, the Pokemon RCS, sorry, Dialga. So a lot of these newer cards or newer Pokemon, newer forms or evolved forms, I actually don't know about. So a lot of this will be somewhat of a surprise to me. I'm gonna be upside down again. Looks like we're gonna have something shiny in this one. One, two, three, four. Okay, Psychic Energy is the first card. We got a gold duck. That's the first time pulling gold duck, in my opinion. Uh, in my opinion. What is it in my opinion? To my knowledge, grants. The Sunya Electrode. I like how the Electrode looks. The wood look. Togepi. Magnemite. First time pulling that one. Routes as well, I believe. The Sunya Sneasel. Mistrevis. All right. Gutsy Pickaxe. Uh, let's see what we have here. We got a Heat Ran V Max. So that is our first V Max card. He ran is a Pokemon, a legendary Pokemon that I find very interesting. Was it fire metal? Really odd type, or is it just fire? I think it's just fire. But either way, he ran is not one of my favorites. I would say legendaries. Here you go. There's the code card. One, two, three, four. Other things that I've been purchasing, I've been purchasing these V Max Premium Collections for the Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon. I think these are underrated. I've been trying to pick up as many as I could. Right now, they're still bearable in terms of pricing, but I think they're definitely underrated. Same with the uh, Pokemon Center ETBs for um, the, what's it? Well, not Evolving Skies, because you can't get Evolving Skies anymore, but Astral Radiance and Brilliant Stars. Scyther, we got Hisui and Growlithe. We got a B-Sharp, B-Sharp, and a Vespa Queen non-holographic rare. In terms of Trainer Gallery cards, there are a lot of cards that still aren't from VMAX Climax that has transferred over to the English set. Notable ones would definitely be the Pikachu V and the P Pikachu VMAX, as well as, well, there it is. As well as the gold and black Pikachu, the Mew. I'm surprised the Mew didn't show up in the Fusion Strike one. I mean, again, Fusion Strike came out before then. Fighting Energy. Then we have a Azelf. That's the first time pulling that. Sheldon. Yuxi, I think that's the first time pulling that. Krikotot, Psyduck, Patilly, Stantler, Bergmite, you got a Cancel Cologne, and then we got a Rampardos Holographic. Do I believe we're gonna pull an alt art? Uh, I always just don't think about it, just think the worst. So when you ever get anything nice, it's a nice surprise. Am I gonna. First time I actually headed the right way. One, two, three, four. I've also been uh, picking up, um, what other things I've been picking up? I'm thinking about picking up some EV heroes, but they've already gotten to the point where they're like 190 to $200 a box of 30 uh, packs. Would really like one of the, you know, the Alt R V Max for Umbreon in the Japanese form would be really cool. Okay, Reggie Drago is the non-holographic, but we got a really nice, Reverse Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil has got to be one of that era of starters is probably the second best in my opinion. Totodile, Cyndaquil, and Chikorita. All that and Torchic, Mudkip, and Trico. Those are the only ones. Everything else is kind of meh to me. Bear with me. I'm probably going to get all these code cards on the wrong side. Oh, this card is kind of messed up. Let's see. Hopefully it's nothing that amazing. We got a Fighting Energy. We got an Elzolf again. A Switch Cards. Yuxi again. 
Oh, sorry. Rufflet, another Ponyta. Chatot, Bronzor, Rowlet, Cleaver, which is about the new form of Scyther. I mean, that's near to me. Is Reverse. And a Basco Legion, Husuian Basco Legion. I didn't even know that thing existed. A lot of these things, I, I didn't even know it was an Earthring evolved. I guess they added a new evolved form of Earthring. So that's that's new to me. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Uh, looks like we're probably gonna get a trainer gallery card. It's not guaranteed that I think though. So we'll see. It's first time getting the spicy seasoned curry. Yeah, be sharp again. We got a Choi, we got a uh, Basculin, we got a Voltorb, nice. Glam Meow, Swindub, we got a Chatot, we got Pet Petalili, uh, I guess we don't get one. We got an Adamant Holographic card. So three Ultra Rares so far and one Trainer Gallery card. So minimum we should get at least another three more ultra rares. Preferably we don't we got you know eight or more. Is it possible to get two alt arts in a booster box? That is a question I want to ask. Has anyone ever done it? It would be very interesting to uh, know about that. Don't even mention about alt arts. I have a hard time just even. I mean the alt art V maxes. I have a hard time pulling just the V's of them. Probably that's a cool card. We got a Hippotas. Quillfish, we got a Cinequil, we got a Growlithe, Bergmite, Reverse is a Bronzong, which is really trippy looking. Is this made by Ken Kenda? Yeah, it is made by Kenda. Okay. And then you got Hisuian over Quill. To me, that's a new new evolved form. I didn't know Quillfish evolved into that. That Quillfish evolved into something else, but maybe it didn't have an evolved form at one point, just like how they added a Surfetch to Farfetch. What I would really like to see is that they get Dunsparce in evolved form. Because Duns Dunsparce is definitely the joke Pokemon. At this point, I just realized they're always going to be upside down. One, two, three, four. First Dark Energy, my... I don't say my opinion again. That I've actually seen. Togetek. Cape Job. Bog. Eevee. Heracross. I skipped the Teddy Ursa. Basculian. Glam Meow. There's our first Radiant card. Out of the Radiant ones, I would say Greninja is probably the one I want, but Halucha is actually really cool too. I like the rainbow color he's at. And then we got a Heat Ran V. It looks like we like to pull the V Stars and the V Maxes of the Vs. So this is going to be our first Radiant. And then we're going to add a Heat Ran V. That is going to be our fourth Ultra. Put it right there. So many packs to go. I know sometimes opening a whole booster box, especially on, on, on channel or on video, can seem like a very daunting task because it's so many packs. One, two, three, four. I'm just glad I didn't get the best card in the first pack. Otherwise, it makes. Um, if you haven't actually looked at our. Um, what was it? What was the last thing I just opened? God, why can I not think of the, think of the name? Either way, if you haven't checked out our last video where I got the, oh, there's the Kel Keldeon holographic card. If you haven't checked out our last video where we actually pulled the trainer gallery or I guess the character rare of Gengar, Dark Phantasma, it seems like I like to pull the best card first. So this time I'm switching them around. I don't know, because I know at LGS stores where they just have open booster boxes, some of them they'll put it in a like, display and they'll pull them one by one and some of them will actually let you pull which booster packs you want i wonder if when you they open a new box that's the first couple of packs maybe like the third pack or fourth pack from the fronts will have a better pull you know it's not guaranteed but it just seems like whenever i open booster boxes tend to be that way all right magneton quillfish scyther a togepi kombi Chadot, Suyan, Electrode is the reverse, and we got My Mighty Ina non holographic. As well as um, thinking about what we're gonna do for our next episode, I mean, if you guys have any suggestions, you know, you can drop a comment down below. I'm always open to see what you guys are interested in, in terms of what I'm collecting, in terms of what I'm thinking of buying, speculating, what I think the market's gonna go towards. What sets are underrated, overrated? Should I do any more of those top tens? It's all different 
things I can do or whatever you guys suggest. There's you know, so many topics you can do. Uh, the Watts, Yamega, Stantler, Yanma, I just, okay. Hoot Hoot, Kukatots, Sudowoodo, Reggie Rock is the reverse, nice. And then we've got Hisuian Samurott V-Star. So pulling two V-Stars. We got the Samurott and then we have the Typhlosion. But it seems like they don't really like the Leaf versions of the starters. They always get shafted, especially Venusaur. I, I swear Venusaur gets so little love. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Charizard, we have like a card in every set. Blastoise, every like other set. And a Venusaur, you might be able to, you get lucky if you get a holographic version of him in anything. Never a secret rare. A secret rare, like I think last time I saw a secret rare would be a Venusaur EX, maybe from EX Fire Leaf, Leaf, Leaf Green, Fire Red. Yeah, that's what it was. And I mean, it's Leaf Green, so it had to include Venusaur. So definitely no love for Venusaur. And I do know there's a lot of Venusaur fans out there. So the Pokemon Go set with the um, Radiant Venusaur, I'm definitely looking forward to. Choi is Reverse. And then we got a Cleaver non-holographic. Pokemon that I would like to see more of. I would like to see, I know they, a lot of the original Kanto 150 or 151 is kind of overplayed or overused because people really like them. But at the same time, I do know that, especially in terms of playability, they gotta make sure they keep it, why can I do this right? Consistent for making sure the playability and the balance is right But I would like to see some other Pokemon's that they never ever show or put in the Pokemon trading card So Golduck Grant Suian Electrode Glammeow again, there's gonna be like 20 Glammeows Swindub That might be the first time pulling a Swindub We got Oshawott We got a Scyther We got a Kamado Here we go Nope, just a Reggie Drago. I can't think of which ones they never they never play anymore. Oh, uh, Cloyster. I like never see a Cloyster card. Cloyster, in terms of, what was it, Gen 3, 4, some of the other pseudo legendaries don't really get much love. I like to see, what is that, Kabutops? Uh, this way. Aha, I got it this time. One, two, three, four. But you know, just some other cards. It's always Charizard, Blastoise, Pikachu, you know, I don't know Gengar, but I would like Gengar, so I don't mind if they print Gengar a billion times over. That's a really nice artwork. Komiya, yeah, Komiya made this one. All right, Growlithe, Voltorb, we got Rufflet, another Ponyta drinking at a lake. Oh, nice, Glaceon Reverse, I will take this. And we got a Arita. The full art for this one is probably the most expensive full arts. I looked at all the full arts. I don't know about you, but some of the full arts are, uh, at least for the trainer ones, some just don't look as good as they used to, or I don't know what it is, but Pokemon definitely is in enjoying putting more background. I really enjoy how they put Pokemon in the backgrounds of the actual card itself or the main Pokemon. I think that's a neat thing. Another code card. Uh, things I missed, I miss old school EXs, I miss legendary halves, I mean they did the thing with the four piece, uh, I think that's a little much, definitely not something that it would be playable even as a collector, having to complete four pieces is kind of tedious. Level X's were kind of cool. All right, so that is our secret rare. I'm not, not bad, I'll take this. It's definitely a really nice card. Origin form Palkia V-Star, definitely a really nice card. Oh, it's so shiny. What got me into Pokemon collecting was another thing is when I was a kid, I really liked shiny objects, just like most kids, but it's just the way it shines just looks so good. Another thing that I wanna know is, you see how all the border and everything is consistent with the shininess? I'm very, uh, a little bit disappointed with the Radiant ones, like I mentioned before in other videos, the Radiant Pokemon in the Japanese set will have the silver border, whereas these ones have the yellow borders, which is definitely not my favorite. So I wish they would, you know, make that change. So that is our secret rare. If we can somehow magically get a alt art 
in this one. I will probably break my streak of worst openings ever. I'm always, every time I see someone open Bobbing Skies, I can tell I'm pretty salty right now. I'm gonna rant for a little bit, but it's always, oh, I pulled a Leafy on VMAX alt arts. I pulled another, you know, all these different alt arts. I, I've yet, okay, not even alt arts. I pulled the same Leafy on V like six times already. I would like some variety. I wouldn't mind pulling a Gyarados V. I've yet, I've, out of all the packs I've opened, all the booster boxes I've opened, I still have not pulled a single Gyarados card. As a collector, I want to complete, complete my master set and it's kind of annoying pulling that many same cards. That being said, I'm missing like all the art, alt arts. I've pulled one, two, two alt arts, three alt arts, sorry. I guess I've pulled three alt arts. Four if you can uh, include duplicates. Glaceon V is the two I pulled that were duplicates. And then we got a Medicham and then Noivern. I another chance at a trainer gallery card, but none of the ones I really wanted. I can't say that Glaceon was one of the ones I really wanted, but just so many things open. I can't pull one thing I want. Not even a secret rare, um, like an Umbreon VMAX. I did not pull an Umbreon VMAX. Not even the old art, just the regular VMAX I have not pulled. All right, is it gonna, it's gonna do it? Okay, so not what I thought it would be, but I'll definitely take this origin form Dialga V-Star. You can tell it's textured. So this one, I mean, this is not a full art, but since it's a VMAX, are all the VMAXs like that? Yeah, all the VMAXs are this. So three VMAX, uh, not VMAX, three V-Stars within this booster box. So I will say this box is actually pretty stacked. Afterwards, we'll do a recap and see how well we did compared to other people. I have seen some pretty pull, uh, poor pull rates of booster boxes. The worst I ever done was probably pull, what is it, six? ultra rares and four of them were v's and two were v maxes that was definitely a really bad box and then you know who knows some people pull a secret rare on top of pulling a alt art and then pulling some other full arts that are really cool v sharp Heracross, teddy ursa mantine scyther basculin oh there is our other uh trainer gallery card <sighs> Yeah, um, I, I wish I got, I mean, I guess I'd be asked too much if I wanted the Garchomp or the Starmie. Then again, I don't know how hard it is to pull that. And then there's a Lilligamp V, regular V card. I did pick up two cases of Astral Radiance and then two regular booster boxes just so I can open them up. As you can see at the beginning of the video, hopefully I pull something good in those. I'm not going to open more than two booster boxes. I'd rather keep them sealed. In terms of the rest, I'm just going to have to buy singles. I really do think that this set, price-wise, is going to be cheap. Once it gets to the point where it reprints, I know people say it's going to be short printed, but since Pokemon got their printing company, uh, bought the pr printing company and, you know, the whole deal, I don't think that they're going to not print more of this. I know that people are saying, oh, because Pokemon Go set is coming out so soon, they're going to stop printing it. Well, yeah, they're going to stop printing because they're going to try to go with the Pokemon Go set. But then once that's set, they're going to just start pumping more of the Astro Radiance out. So I think it was the most expensive cards are $70, $80, which is the Origin Form Dialga and then the Champ V Alt Art. Those ones will go down. I will. I wouldn't be surprised it went down to like $40, $50 at some points. Uh, don't quote me on it because you know you don't, never know how high the demand of set will command but in terms of value in this sets mantine and then leafion not hungry that's cool i would fusion strike i know i mentioned a billion times definitely underrated it has two cards in there gengar and espion that are fan favorites and the alt art v max forms of those beautiful and they're both over hundred dollars so it's a very underrated set just because it got smacked be in between evolving skies and brilliant stars it gets a lot of flack for it this whole video is going to be brought to you by upside down code cards so i really do think fusion strike got shafted in that sense but that's fine with me i would love to have those cards drop in price even more so i can pick one up i still don't want to pay 150 dollars for one of those cards I never really want to pay that price on a booster box. I know a booster box, you not guarantee it, but if it's only hundred dollars for uh, less than hundred dollars for a booster box, I don't really want to buy the cards. Yeah, Met 
mess for it is gonna be the holographic card. So those are things that personally I do when I collect things. But then again, there are gonna be alt arts that are just so cheap, but the artwork's so good. And I will just pick those up. I remember picking up the alt art Blissey V. I picked up like eight of them just because they were like 20 bucks. 20 bucks is so cheap. When you try to pull an alt art, it's, as you can tell from my experiences, yeah, I didn't mess it up this time. It's really hard. It's probably even like, uh, I guess like two per booster case, one or two to a booster case if you're lucky. So having one of them be $20, definitely worth it. The Tornadus V one is really cool. I've always loved the Tyranitar one. Tyranitar one, definitely, I, I'm glad I waited until it dropped in price because they were going for like $150 each, I remember, at one point. And then they dropped to like 60 and I picked up a whole bunch of them. Uh, Mammoth Swine non-holographic. I don't know, timing is very key uh, in terms of what you're trying to buy. And then again, you know, you, you miss things, you win some, you lose some. It's hard to say. I mean, for these boxes in the back, I did at one point have a chance to buy them for slightly cheaper, but I, at the time I wasn't sure uh, that the alt arts for Jolteon, Vaporeon, Flareon only came in um, these specific ultra premium boxes. So, but then they were actually really hard to get. I remember when it first came out, they were sold out everywhere. All right, Golduck, got super effective glasses. Drift Bloom, another Psyduck, got a Togepi, a Magneton, a Routes, we got Hisuian Avalog, interesting, and a Hisuian Bravery, not holographic. As we drop down to our last, I don't know, four, nine packs, I told myself and I told, myself, uh, told my wife that this wasn't going to be a long video. She guessed it would be around 45 minutes, and I think she's going to be right. So, upside down co card again, but it can't be helped. The booster boxes, I mean, opening up 36 packs. Not complaining about opening up 36 packs. It's definitely always a treat and a privilege to be open up booster boxes. I remember as a kid when you can just afford to get one pack or your parent allowed you to get one pack. I remember my fondest memory about getting a pack was after farmer's market, we would go to a restaurant and next door, Radiant Greninja. So at least I got the Radiant one I want. This is definitely cool. Two Radiants in a box. Uh, I think that's probably standard. But anyways, right next door, there would be a bookstore. And I remember, what was it? Neo Destiny. Not, not, not the first edition Neo Destiny, but just Neo Destiny being $3.99 a pack. And we would buy a couple of packs. I remember buying like three packs. And I remember pulling the Tyranitar and I was ecstatic about it. It was so much, so much fun. Back in the day, it was just enough money to try your luck. And if you pulled anything, it was just so much fun. Nowadays, it's slightly different. The collecting, the opening is still, uh, the, the, the excitement and the fun is still there. But, you know, at the end, these, it, these cards are meant for kids and Definitely the survive, survivability, the way that the market will go for the Pokemon will be, depend on each generation and how they deal with uh, nothing. All right, so this is the Ursa Luna. That's the ball form of Ursa Ring that I was talking about. Didn't know they had that. But the survivability of the market or the health of a TCG overall will depend on the next generation. So if the kids aren't opening up these packs, they're not having fun with it, then the market will die. I don't see that with Pokemon because Pokemon definitely does a really great thing in marketing. They definitely make sure to appease everybody. So I don't have to worry about that. But those are things to also consider in when you collect or if you're interested in investing in anything, you gotta see how the company, you know, is planning for the future, how they are able to do things. At the end for Pokemon, it is meant for kids it is meant to be fun and if it's no longer fun then there's no point all right craniodose is the reverse and we got a dark rye v so overall this box we could hit a good amount of ultra rares i know it's much but you know i would like an alt art if i can pull the alt art from this box uh there will be no need to open the other one so 
you know, that won't happen, but at the very least, I gotta pull at least one alt art. So if I don't pull the alt art from these two booster boxes, I will have to open booster boxes until I pull at least one. So I guess it's not a bad thing if I don't pull it, but money-wise, it'd be nice if I can keep everything sealed. Bronzor, Rowlets, Oshawott again. We got a Scyther, Stantler. We got a Reverse Sudo Wudo. That's nice. And we got a Cleaver Holographic. Cleaver, I think Cleaver's pretty cool. Uh, a different uh, evolved form of Scyther. I still like uh, Scizor more. Scizor, Scizor, whatever you want to call him. Steel form is definitely a great look in my opinion. Cleaver is de definitely a little bit more intimidating in my, my opinion. Looks a little scarier. Nope. I'm just never gonna get it right. Maybe I'll pay more attention next time. All right. All right, Dark Energy is the first card. We got a Silene. Sil I don't know, Perugly. Azalith. Sudowoodo again. Magnemite. We got a Routes. We got a Suyan Sneasel. Mistrevis. Diancy's is reverse and a Thievel non holographic. I think it's the first time pulling Diancy. We have four packs left to go. One more Ultra Rare. One more Ultra Rare would be nice. Definitely, uh, in terms of secret rares, it's not a bad pull. There are a lot of secret rares that are not that great. Um, I wouldn't, I think, like I said, Path to the Peak. You know what? Path of the Peak is not even that expensive. I definitely uh, buy it. I really like those kind of cards, especially scenery. Secret rares are really cool. Definitely the one I like the most is the Viridian Force one. I have like 20 of those ones from the Cosmic Eclipse. Or there's the another trainer gallery, Frost Moth. Darn it, still haven't got one of the ones I wanted. But Braviary, but I will take it. As long as I don't get duplicates, unless they're duplicates of really cool cards, I'm happy with that. So we got another one. Three more packs to go. Still looking for the Beedrill and the Machamp alt art. Upside down, upside down. Yeah, there you go. Every time it should be upside down. One, two, three, four. We're at 43 minutes. Okay, maybe not 43 minutes. Alright. Curlia. Wait and see Turbo. Fuchiana. Swinub. We got a Quillfish. Petit Lily. Nicket. Oshawa's Reverse. And Shaman Non-Holographic. Rare, but I think that's the first time pulling Shaman. Our last two packs. As we wind down, next video will not be the second box. We're gonna switch it up a little. Probably gonna do another one of those videos where I'm gonna compare 36 blisters to a booster box and see which has a better pull. I also gotta try the three pack blisters as well at some point. But I feel like those ones are really bad voids. I remember opening a whole bunch of them for Evolving Sky and pulling nothing. Literally nothing from them. So it's hard to say. There's another Trainer Gallery card. So Galarian Articuno V. Oh, and what's in the back? Miss, Miss Magnus is the non holographic. So in terms of number of hits for this box, I definitely think this has been a really good box. What is it? That's our third, fourth trainer gallery card. We'll separate them through and see what we got and once we finish our last pack. Finally, last pack. Can we get last pack magic here? Upside down code card. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. That card is really beat up. Thank God that isn't the rare. All right, fighting energy. We got Togetic. I think it's the first time pulling Togetic. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I haven't pulled a whole bunch of them just because these sets are so huge. All right, Hoot Hoot. 
I don't remember dude. Stantler, these are definitely cards there and Pokemon that I remember. Scyther. All right, Sweet Honey. And we end on a non-holographic Suian Avalog. Let's go through everything real quick. That's a lot of cards right here. All right, starting off, let's do a recap. Origin Form uh, Palkia V-Star, Secret Rare. Rainbow Rare, whatever you want to call it. A Darkrai V. Kisuian Typhlosion V, Lilligant V, Heatran V, Hisuian Samurai V Star, Hisuian Typhlosion V Star, Origin Form Dialga V Star, we got a Heatran v, uh, v Max, only V Max, we got a Radiant Halucha, we got a Radiant Greninja, we got a Wide Deer, it's a Trainer Gallery card, a Bombless Snow, another one, Frost Moth. And finally, an Articuno. So in terms of actual Ultra Rares, not counting the these ones, the Radiants don't count as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Better than the average six to eights. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun opening this box. Look forward to future openings. Look future to other kinds of videos. If you like I mentioned before, if there's any kind of video you want me to do, please leave a comment down below. As always, I had fun. I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.